in Iowa, where you have to poke over the stick to make sure it's not dead. It's vlog number 21, Cooking and Comfy Pants. Hello, Davo here. Haven't done one of the vlogs for a while, so here we are. Vlog number, I believe 21? Is that right? Is it 21 or 22? I'll figure it out later. Thought I'd do something different, stuck at home today, so I thought I'd... Uh, mess around with this recipe I've been messing around with, so this is going to be me cooking. I don't know if that's cool, I don't know if that's something you want to see, but yeah, that's what's going to happen today. So, sit back, enjoy, and get hungry, because we're going to make some pasta sauce, or Cajun kind of feel to it. We'll get into it in a second. Well, welcome to my dimly lit and uh, messy kitchen. It is what it is. So what I'm going to be doing today is kind of a Cajun pasta sauce thing with uh, just some regular spaghetti. Already filled up the pot, so we're going to get that boiling because sometimes it takes a little while. And just a little hint, everybody once tells you that you're supposed to put uh, salt, or not salt, you're supposed to put salt in there. So you should always season your pasta water. But people say you should put olive oil in there to lubricate the noodles. That doesn't do anything. That's just silly. So, what you're gonna need, or what I'm gonna be working with. First off, our base meat sausage, which is not very uh, Cajun, but we're making pasta, so let's let's experiment a little bit. Graziano, if you're in Des Moines, best stuff you're gonna find. If you're not in Des Moines, um, make sure that you don't just buy the stuff on the tube. It's not as good. Try to find something that's locally sourced with a little bit more spice and kick to it. Vegetables, onions, peppers, chopped up. Gotta have cayenne pepper. And also um, oregano and thyme. Um, and salt, of course. A little salt to taste. As far as canned stuff, diced tomatoes, big can, and three cans of the tomato paste. So to start out with, we need to brown the sausage. Put a little bit of olive oils in there to kind of lubricate it. And turn the fire on and get that sizzling. The biggest thing in pasta I love is big pots. Um, I happened to find these a long time ago and got a really good deal on them and I've used these for everything from just cooking pasta to making sauces to making beer. Now the way I came up with this idea was uh, we made, uh, we used this recipe as kind of the base for our jambalaya. It's a little different because instead of using ground, uh, Italian sausage we'd be using um, Dewey, so our andouille sausage, we'd also be using a um, eh, piece of something. We'd also be using uh, seafood. I'm not smoking, so that's ready to go. We'll probably need to turn that down a little bit. Smoking oil is not good. Um, and chicken. The first thing, you know, I always try to do this in one pot whenever possible, and the reason for that is so you can start building up all those flavors, get that burnt stuff at the bottom, and get all that flavor into one pot. So what we're going to do right now is brown the sausage, and then once we've done that, we'll move on to the next step. Yeah. 
Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Everybody should... I think it's important everybody learns how to cook. Um, I started cooking basically out of necessity and hunger. Um, sometimes, just be family life and as busy as everybody was, mom couldn't cook every night. Or she basically say, okay, there's food there, go ahead and do it. And I started small. I think the first thing I ever made, other than like really basic like stuff, was pasta. And I made my own spaghetti sauce. Which seemed pretty simple. And I started out, I, you know, everybody's kind of intimidated, especially if you've never cooked before. I would suggest starting with kind of boxy type stuff. Like tuna helper, casserole type stuff. So that you can uh, kind of build on it. Experiment with it, add other ingredients to it that you think might taste good with it, and just continue to do that until you come up with, kind of get a basic idea of how to do stuff. Um, don't just jump in and try really complicated recipes. Just kind of build on what you can do and what you know. Now that sausage is browned, I want to go ahead and pull it out. I like to use a slotted spoon for this, just basically because then all the grease stays in here, so you're not reintroducing a bunch of grease back into the pot when you add the sausage later, or chicken, or whatever meat you're using for base. And once you've done that, and it takes a little while sometimes, um, back to the box thing. Um, one thing you can do is just make ramen noodles and play around with different spices that you put in ramen. You'd be surprised how many different flavor types and etc. that you can come up with um, by just adding a few spices or a few ingredients. There's always a little bit left in there. I'm not really worried about the amount of fat that's in there right now. We're gonna cook up the vegetables next. And that's what we're doing right now. We've added the onions and the bell peppers. And part of what we want to do is we want to kind of build on that sausage flavor, get all that burntness in there, all the browning because that's all flavor. So these will take a little while to cook and you want to get them to the point where they're tender crisp or translucent, the onions especially. I like red onions personally. A lot of people don't like them because they think they're a little too sweet, but I think they have a better flavor. They add more character to the little dish no matter what you're cooking. So I'm a fan of the purple or red onions to add the garlic. Yeah, uh, basically I put in roughly about six tablespoons, or teaspoons, tablespoons would be insane, of minced garlic. Now we're going to add the tomato paste. This, so we're going to add three cans of it. And you'll notice I'm kind of pulling it off to the side of the fire because it's going to get ahead of me. I wish there was an easier way to do this, but we have yet to find it. If somebody has one, please, please let me know because I'd like to know. Now what you want to do once we get this all in there, I bet that sounds lovely on the video recording is you want to brown the tomato paste. So it gets to a point where it's kind of monog uh, mahogany colored. So now, you want to brown that. And it doesn't matter if a little bit gets kind of burntish on the bottom, kind of that brown color. Because we just kind of make a ball with it because that's kind of what we're going for. I want to get it to the point where it's kind of almost mahogany colored. 
to that point where it's kind of mahogany colored. The nose is getting darker. It's kind of burning a little bit. All of that is flavor. Flavor, I'm telling you, flavor. Now we're gonna add the seasoning in. The thing I forgot about the chicken hot, the chicken broth. We're gonna add about two cups. I like to use these because they're exactly eight ounces, so it kind of balances out. And I might get a little bit more of that tomato out of there. this well. So get it all mixed together here. And I think I'm going to add another two cups of the chicken broth. Oh wait, no, I'm going to do seasoning next. See, what we're doing is we're building up flavors. First, we've got that sausage flavor. We've got that. Um, got the burnt tomato flavor. We've got the vegetable flavor. Now, if we were doing Cajun, we would have started out with garlic, peppers. Well, peppers, onions, and celery. The holy trilogy. Trilogy. So, what I'm going to add right now is the canned tomatoes. Well, and we're going to get out one of the most important parts of every kitchen and every cooking experience. The tasting spoon. Get in there. ounces the chicken broth though we're gonna mix that in and then we're gonna let it simmer for about 10 minutes after I add one more thing so we're getting a lot of that front or that uh, back of mouth definite Frio Cajun Heat. I'm going to add some crushed red pepper and I'm thinking a teaspoon. And what we're doing is we're letting all those fly, all those chemical reactions, letting all those flavors kind of combine and get interested with one another and develop a new, more complex taste. We're going to leave that beat and let those do what they need to do. Something you always want to remember is always taste your sauce on a regular basis. When you're seasoning, especially if you're adding heat to it, it'll always cook out more. Now, I want it a little bit sweeter than what it is. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of brown sugar. I'm an American. I like sweet things. But I'm not going to add a lot. I'm just going to add a teaspoon. Just to give it kind of a little bit of a sweet taste to it. Not too crazy. To offset. And give it that balance between the heat and the sweet. Those are my two flavor flavors. Favorite flavors. So let's stir that in. And the brown sugar will kind of melt into it and also give it a slightly darker look to it. Then it'll take a few minutes for it to go there. But what I'm tasting is a little bit of sweetness, 
the, the tartness from the tomato, a little bit of heat in the front from the cayenne pepper, a little bit of black pepper on the back. I might need just a tad bit of salt. So we're gonna tad more salt in there. Give it a couple more stirs and see if we're getting the flavor characters that we want. Tasting spoon. Now, you want to check the thickness. Personally, it should slide like that. I like it to stick to the uh, pasta a little bit. Now we're going to add that sausage back. I always use kind of a spoon for the last of it because there's usually a little bit of grease regardless of how much you drained or didn't drain. I'm gonna mix all, mix all that sausage in there. And actually, this would probably be good as a sandwich. You could add it to, uh, to some hoagie buns. And go ahead and uh, slap some of this on there. Put a couple of slices of provolone or I guess you could use uh, provolone or um, mozzarella. Heat up the oven to about 425, cook it in there for about five minutes, and have a pretty good sausage sandwich. But now we want the sausage to add a little bit more flavor to it. So we're going to let it simmer again for another 10 minutes. Our water's boiling. Thick spaghetti. Use a lot of surface for the spaghetti to rest on, or the sauce to collect on when you swirl it. And for al dente, it's usually about 11 minutes. So we'll set that. And the sauce should be ready by then, too. So I think we're on the way to, to, uh, to food time. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more chicken broth because I'm going to thin that out just a little bit. A total of four cups. So we're going to put another cup in here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Well, the sauce has cooked down nicely. All the steam coming off of it. And the pasta is al dente and ready to deliver. One thing everybody should know, never wash pasta. The only reason you never wash, pots, wash pasta, or wash, as we say in the Midwest, is if you are gonna go ahead and add it to a casserole and you didn't want to stop the, the pasta from cooking any further. Otherwise, leave it alone. Don't wash it. So, that's all there is to making pasta sauce at home. My own version of it. So, uh, that's all for this vlog. Enjoy yourself. Try this at home. Cook. It's entertaining, especially when you do it with other people. Do it with relatives, friends, loved ones, etc. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you'd like to see more of my vlogs, click on the playlist. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my other channel, which mainly focuses on tattooing and piercing, click on that one. Um, and if you like live music, check out Lefties Alive. Playlist. Good playlist. A lot of stuff. A lot of bands. A lot of stuff. Anyway, so here's the final result. It's an old glory with the steam rising off of it. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful. Enjoy.